All right, we're back. We're going to talk about air conditioning. We're still uh, in the 80 mile an hour zone, going uphill. It's amazing how far you can go uphill in Texas. They don't really have mountains here; they have hills. Uh, I will say, if you're if you're going to go 80 miles an hour with larger tires, especially, uh, make sure they're inflated properly and they're in good shape. I've seen a lot of several vehicles lose their tires. Um, also, I've seen several vehicles pulled over for speeding in the 80 mile an hour zone, which is pretty interesting. Anyway, uh, this was the first vehicle, of course, that we did the swap on, so we learned a lot about the air conditioning. And on the earlier JKs, that would be the 07 to 10, the air conditioning starts here at the air conditioning switch. When you push that little button and a light comes on, that sends a multiplex signal up to your instrument cluster. And the instrument cluster is actually the cab module, which is part of the network. Uh, that multiplex signal then gets converted into the CAM, the CAM bus signal, which gets sent to your PCM, or your powertrain control module, which then filters it. Filters it for engine RPM, uh, engine load, and other things. Um, and I might want to say that the cab module also filters it. The cab module filters it for evaporator temp temperature, which means um, the evaporator, if it gets too cold, it will freeze. And uh, it, it will cut it off at about 40, 41 degrees, and then bring it back on about 45, 46 degrees. <clears throat> then the signal gets sent to the PCM, and it's filtered for engine performance parameters, such as RPM and engine load. Then it gets sent over to the TIPM on a separate signal wire, which uh, activates the compressor clutch. And the TIPM can also filter the signal. So it's pretty complex. And to make it work properly, and make it work just like a dip stock, we had to, of course, build our own electronics. And our, our newer electronics support uh, uh, most of the filtering. Uh, the EVAP temperature, the engine performance parameters, some of our early, early kits did not. And we're upgrading customers to our newer electronics. Um, starting in 11, a lot of things changed. When they changed the interior, they changed the high vac control to a, a module, basically a CAN module. So now the high the high vac controller communicates over the CAN bus and sends the required signals to where they have to go. Um, they've also changed the blend door for the hot cold performance. It uh, I find them somewhat unreliable. Some of you with 12s and 13s might see your your AC not come on. Well, the AC not coming on for five or ten seconds when you first turn it on is, is normal. Uh, but sometimes you'll see it just cut out. And other times you'll see the blend door not, not kick in when it's supposed to. I've, I've noticed all sorts of weird anomalies. So again, that was a challenge to get the 11 plus systems to work. Um, it, it, it's it's a uh, it's a better system or more sophisticated system in that it can monitor evap temperature and heater core temperature more accurately and more efficiently. So it it can then power the the air compressor um, less for a the, the result required. Meaning um, the earlier system was more of a manual system. So when the compressor was on, it was pretty much on. The newer system can cycle it based more on temperature. Uh, I find it more complex and more troublesome. I like the earlier systems with the manual temperature control. Uh, they seem to be more reliable. Um, let's talk about tap shift. Tap shift is the ability to put the transmission into a manual mode and shift it electronically. Uh, this tap shift is built into the steering column. I don't know if you can see this switch. This switch is about five years old, so it's a little bit ragged. Uh, again, it works through the BCM on the truck SUV operating systems. With the Corvette, it operates through the transmission control module direct, which means your switched input goes right into the TCM. 
Uh, some there's some companies out there supporting that setup with a Corvette. The issue is you have to run a Corvette tune, which means you lose uh, some functions. Like if you had VVT, AFM. <clears throat> Uh, and in some cases, cruise control, you, you won't have them with that tune. You, you you essentially end up adding the body control module to, to add that functionality, which we have done. Now, as far as activating the tap shifts, uh, l let me say a couple of things about the manual mode. Well, in a 6L80, when you go from park to reverse to neutral to drive, you are a full automatic. And you're probably going to leave it in the automatic mode 95% of the time because the 6L80 is an adaptive transmission which means it learns how you drive and you'll find that 95% of the time isn't exactly the gear you want it to be. Um, there's going to be situations whether it's off-road or going down a steep grade where you want to downshift it or upshift it manually so you bring it back into the manual mode. Now when you bring it into the manual mode this is confusing for a lot of guys. There's several different modes in the manual mode. Let's say I'm going up one of these hills and I'm shifting between 5th and 6th and the, the, the 6 l lady has two true overdrives. 6th uh, is .66 and 5th is a true overdrive. Uh, so if you go from 6th to 5th, you're still in an overdrive mode. Well, if you're hunting between 5th and 6th and you drop it in the manual mode, when it's in 5th, it will lock it in that gear. In fact, it'll lock it in that gear uh, whenever you move that shift lever back into manual. Whatever gear you're in, it's going to lock it in. So that, that's a good feature, especially on long road trips um, in the mountains. Now, it will downshift if it has to, but it will not upshift past the gear that you locked it into. Uh, the second mode is a sport automatic mode. If you come to a stop or you don't hit the manual switch, the tap shift switch while you're in the manual mode, it will revert to a sport mode. The sport mode varies with operating system, but essentially it will shift at a higher RPM, it will shift firmer, and it will usually only shift up to third or fourth gear. And if you want to do performance driving, you're in the mountains, then put it into the sport mode. Um, and then finally you have the tap shift or the manual mode. As soon as you put it into that manual gate and hit the switch, you are now into the manual mode. And you have manual control of the transmission. You can upshift it and downshift it. It will override you if it has to downshift if it's under a heavy load and you've selected too high of a gear. But other than that, you have full control of the tap shift uh, of the gear that your transmission is in uh, with your switch. Uh, behind that is, uh, behind the manual mode is second gear. And then it does have a manual first gear, which we don't support with the earlier JKs for two reasons. One, you can get first gear more efficiently with tap shift. And two, the shifter does not have uh, uh, enough positions for that gate. We have supported a few with it, but it's, it's just, it, there's too many positions at that point, and I think it gets confusing. Um, with the 12 shifters, we only go from drive into manual, and that's all you get because the 12 shifter only has that the, the manual gate available and, and nothing behind that. And that works out really well because uh, you can get all the gears you want in that in that manual mode, and uh, and there's no need to have the the, manu the, the manually selected gates. Um, so again, uh, the key to the cruise control and electronic shifting is the body control module, which we have integrated into the network. Uh, I, I don't believe any other companies have done it to the degree we have. We've been doing it for years. But we have other functionalities in the BCM, uh, such as power modes, and we have a tow haul mode available to us. And there, there's a lot of functionality when you build the network and you build it properly. Um, terminate the network where it needs to be uh, get all the data that that a Silverado or whatever your donor engine has. So if you ever did have to service it, uh, the dealer could tap in and communicate with these modules, pull out trouble codes. Um, it, it it's really a it, it's really an OE style setup. It, it's not an engine swap where you threw an engine into a chassis and you deleted a bunch of things. You know, O2 sensors and emissions and all that. Everything is there and. I've had our customers have their vehicles serviced at dealerships and and it's all available to the two, whether they have a Tech 2, TIS, um, 
master tech, all the OE data is there. So we're going to head into San Antonio and we'll see you when we get there.